Welcome to this episode of Progressive Voices. I'm Wendy Sue Johnson, and I am here with Danny Claskis from the Eau Claire Area School District. Welcome, Danny. Thank you for having me. Could you tell us uh, what your job is in the district? Sure, I am the Homeless Program Coordinator for the Eau Claire Area School District. And how long have you been in that position? This is my 10th year. How did your position come about? Uh, we had uh, federal grant funding uh, for working with homeless students and um, helping them with their education since 1999, but not enough for uh, um, a position until 2006. And when we did receive enough for a part-time position, that's where I came in. Great. And so could you uh, tell us briefly about your responsibilities? Sure. I work with every student and hopefully a family attached to them in the Eau Claire School District uh, that is experiencing homelessness during a school year. Um, work to provide all the needs that they have or connect them um, to any educational needs within the school district and then um, work with their family to help connect them to community resources so that hopefully they can get out of homelessness as soon as possible. Why is it important uh, to the school district to specifically work with homeless children? As um, it would be for other students in the school district that have needs that pertain to their learning. Um, working with homeless students that have needs um, that are barriers to their learning, um, I work with them to make sure that we are uh, eliminating those barriers. Um, those can be uh, transportation issues when a family becomes homeless and they were on the south side but now they are homeless on the north side. Um, there's a transportation issue of keeping them at their same school. Uh, we want to keep them at their same school so their learning continues almost seamlessly until they get into uh, a new housing situation. Um, so while they're in flux we provide that transportation to keep them at their same school along with supplies um, that will be needed for learning in their classrooms and other items that they actually need to be a part of school and that includes you know coats, jackets in this cold weather, um, shoes to participate in gym, um, and other things that uh, allows a child to be healthy and well so that they can attend school and not have the worries of um, good hygiene or um, hunger and be able to walk into a classroom and just learn. So it sounds like your primary goal is to keep the children in a consistent situation so that they're prepared to learn each day. Definitely. Uh, they, uh, there is estimates that a student can lose up to six months of uh, learning just switching from one school to the next and I don't think that quite would happen within our school district but um, certainly we, we want to minimize any possibility of that so keep, keeping them in their same school would bring that to down to zero. So. Can you tell us a little bit about the number of homeless children in the Eau Claire Area School District and the trends you've seen recently? We have uh, around 200 students um, that have been homeless since the start of this school year. Uh, last year we ended with 321, so those are large numbers for the Eau Claire area. Um, typically uh, we will uh, see about 80% um, will leave the program and we will not, they will not experience homelessness again and um, we will not serve them again, so 80% um, are new students then following school year. Um, and a family that may be homeless um, two or more years, uh, that, that's a typical stint is two years, and, and then we don't see them again either. So um, really after two to three years, um, there are all new families. We, we don't have families continue again and again and again through our program. That is very far and few between. So when you say there's 200 homeless children in this school year, you're talking about in the past, you know, four to five months, so it's not 200 any one particular time, that it's usually a short-term need? Correct. Um, average length of homelessness is approximately two to three months, and then that family hopefully has been connected to resources in the community and um, received help through our program um, for what they need at school that they are able to um, gather enough resources to get into their own place. Could you define homelessness for us? Homelessness will look different depending on where you are in the country. Um, and my example is if you were down south where it's warmer, you're probably going to see more families living in their vehicles. And thankfully, up here where it's a lot colder, we don't. Um, our homelessness looks um, more like uh, doubled up with other families. 
um, which um, is a bigger number of the uh, percentage of students that are homeless from year to year. Uh, but those, that's a temporary situation where they're living with other families. A lot of times relationships are strained after a short time. Um, they're living in a place that is very small and not adequate for the number of people in that house. Um, and, and so it, even though they are doubling up with someone, it's, it's not a comfortable situation. And um, that is the largest uh, homeless population um, for us. And uh, next are the shelters, the emergency and transitional shelters. I think people are um, aware of some of them, if not all of them, Beacon, Bolton, Western Dairylands, Homeless Havens. And even Sojourner will serve our students who are 18 and older who are um, either with a parent or without. Um, and then our motel, um, not usually hotel, but motel and hotel stays um, where families, that is their primary residence is a motel and, and that's where they're living. We do have a few families that are, um, have slept in their car, thankfully right now we do not and, and that's great. Um, we do have um, some um, that have been in tents during the warmer months and that is their primary residence. So when you're talking about uh, families doubling up, I'm imagining kids sleeping on floors and couches and so the lack of sleep would also be another barrier that you're uh, attempting to address so that children are um, awake enough. To the, the, um, when you're in somebody else's house, you have to abide by their rules and their um, norms of living. So if that person is um, a single person who is used to being awake till 11 or 12 at night watching TV, a family coming in is probably not going to change those habits and so the, the kids are subject to what is happening in that household. Um, and, and along with that, um, hotel and motel stays are probably the hardest for our kids because um, they're at motels and um, there's slamming doors at all hours of the night and they are trapped in kind of one room as their residence. It's definitely not a vacation to these kids and, and as that goes longer and longer, we see that take a toll on the kids, even worse than the doubling up or the, the shelter stays. So what sorts of um, services do you provide in your role? So how it works is uh, I learn that a family is homeless either because they know about our program and they, come, they contact a staff member at um, school or staff members are aware of it and, and um, get in contact with us or um, community agencies are working with a family or, or in, aware of their homeless situation and get in contact with us. And um, once I learn of a family, I contact them, talk about uh, or talk to the family about what's going on with them individually and try to figure out from there what resources that they need. Um, whether they're at a point where they can get into their own housing, uh, then you know I would point them in those directions, but sometimes they are just trying to get some footing of what's going on right now. You know, there's, there's some pretty unstable situations, you know, a hotel stay where they don't know how to pay for the next night and they don't know where to go the next night. So they are really, worried about where they're going to be able to lay their child's head to go to sleep the next night and they're certainly not at the point where they can get housing yet. Um, and, and then um, from the school district's ability we receive um, everything we provide besides transportation is uh, received by donation. Um, there is very few things that we ever purchase now that um, would be in the way of supplies um, but they are school supplies. Um, otherwise, all clothing, all backpacks, and, and pretty much most of the school supplies are, are donation-based from our community, um, wonderful community members and agencies. And, um, and so we make sure that the kids have what they need for that. And then um, transportation, which is a big piece of our program uh, because we want to keep them at their same schools. So it sounds like you're identifying their needs and providing the things like a ride to school, a backpack, warm clothing to help those children come to school ready to learn. Such basic things, you know, that really without those things, how prepared would that child be to learn? All right, well, thank you for being with us today, Danny, and we're gonna come back again and uh, extend our conversation, but I really appreciate uh, your information and helping us understand homelessness in our district. Thank you very much.